Hey, good evening. It's uh, Tuesday, December 5th, and welcome back to Everyday Talks 24-7. Thanks so much for being here. What we're doing is, for, from now until Christmas, we're looking at the Advent as Luke presents it in his Gospel. And it's a fantastic story that Luke gives us. Because it's not just about a single time. It's about bringing everything together that led up to the birth of Christ and why we can have hope. So yesterday we looked at Zechariah, the priest, whom this marvelous message came to him from Gabriel, the archangel, while he's in the temple. And Gabriel comes to Zechariah and gives him this amazing message. Let me read it again for you, beginning in uh, verse 11 in Luke chapter 1. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. Remember, 400 years since God had actively brought the word of God to his people. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Probably a prayer that maybe he and Elizabeth had actually stopped praying, asking for a son, asking for a child. And then as they became older, they just became resigned to the fact they weren't going to have any and that Elizabeth would be barren. But now the angel comes to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John, and he will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will receive, will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Notice people didn't think, people outside of Israel didn't think it was great, but God said he was great. He is never to take wine or fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel he will bring back to the Lord their God, and he will go before the Lord in spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. And this is probably more talking about the bringing of the people of God, the children of God, back, rather than a specific family thing, bringing them back to their God, their Father. And he said, then he will get, make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That was his job. It was the prophet's job. Isaiah 40 lays that out in detail. So the angel of God comes and stands before Zechariah and gives him this marvelous, marvelous truth of answered prayer. And they're going to have a son. And it's mind-blowing because an angel is now standing before him. And Zechariah is blown away. But after the word of the Lord comes to the angel, what does Zechariah say? And that's what I want to focus on for today. And the question I want to ask for today, why do you and I have doubt? Why do we doubt the truth of God? Well, here it is. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. What he's saying to Gabriel, to the angel, is, pal, this isn't possible. You've waited too long. And the angel responds this way, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will not, and now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Why do we doubt? Because we don't believe the words of God. We don't trust in his wisdom. Now, I'm not talking about a situation where we have some fantastic promise or I believe that God will do what I want. But notice here what Gabriel says. You will be silent and not able to speak until the day has happened because you did not believe my words. 
James talks about wisdom and not doubting. Why do we doubt? Because we don't take God at his word. Sometimes we confuse the word of God. We think God is coming through us through some extra special means, or he will specifically answer whatever I want. And then we doubt because it doesn't work out. That's not what's being said here. When the angels come and announce themselves to the shepherds, they say, you know, rejoice and glorify God because God, he is going to rescue his people. And we're going to find the people of God will find peace, the people with whom God has favored will know peace and be able to glorify God. That's what God has called us to. God will bless us. Maybe not in the way that we think, but in the way that he is committed to. So I can be sure of that, of God's blessing, of God's concern for me, that I, am I can be certain of his favor. And I need to interpret events through that lens rather than saying, well, this doesn't look like it's God's favor. This doesn't look like God's being very nice to me. I'm really hurting right now. Things are hard in my life. My children aren't where I think they should be. I am, I'm falling behind in my work, my finances. How is that God's favor? See, that's questioning and doubting God. We don't know the specifics how God's going to answer our prayers and answer his faithfulness to us. What we do know, and what Zechariah should have known, is that God will be faithful. Of that, we can never doubt. Even if it's through tears, even if there's a very hard thing, God will be faithful. I can run everything through that lens and trust him. We get in trouble when we try and make it too specific. Or we think God has to bless me in a certain way that I think is blessing. That's where you and I get in trouble. But if we could listen to the message here, the very simple message, now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words. We must not confuse God's words with the plans and thoughts of men. We must not confuse God's word with the things that you and I want. What we must know is that God will be faithful. And Zechariah, confronted with the archangel Gabriel standing in front of him, and he hears this glorious promise of what he had always wanted, And he says, how could I be sure? Now God is gracious to Zechariah. They have the, their baby boy. He does do the things that God said that John the Baptist would do. But in that moment, he doubted because he couldn't take God at his word. But you and I get to that point where even through our grief, even through the hard things that are there, even through though we don't see any other way. Remember yesterday we talked about God's, as Davis, Dr. Davis says, God's most impressive work is done in the context of the possibility. That's taking God at his word. I don't know how God's going to be good to me, but I do know he'll be faithful to me. And I know he'll be faithful to you. That's how we get rid of doubt. That's how we remove it. That's how we find hope. And Zechariah, he learned from this, had hope, and was faithful, and they had a son. We'll continue the story tomorrow, but this is such a beautiful story. Again, love your comments and feedback. Such, so, such a great blessing to be with you. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. 
May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.